It is game number 21 of the 2018 Norm Stewart Classic between Otterville and Lincoln. This time, the boys go toe-to-toe -to -toe here inside of Columbia College at Southwell Complex for the 2018 Norm Stewart Classic. Cam Thomas alongside Kevin Kelly. We will have the call for you of Lincoln just coming off a Class 1 final in football. Now they turn the note over to basketball in the boys section for a team that uh, hasn't had much experience so far together this season. Coming off that football victory, or that football loss yesterday, they haven't practiced all season, Kevin. You know, Cam, 17-10 a year ago, and as you mentioned, they played for a title yesterday in football. There's 16 players on this roster. 11 of the 16 are football players. The other five are freshmen and didn't play on the football team. You turn over to the Otterville side, head coach by Tom Ward. They're ready to go. The Eagles have already played one game this season. They're 0-1. They lost by two to Buncee Town, and uh, we now have our honorary tip. We will have a chance to talk to Chris Massman at halftime, and here it is. Honorary tip has concluded. Chris Massman for, from the Missouri Electric Cooperatives. We will get a chance to chat with them at halftime. We love all the sponsors that we get a chance to talk to here at the 2018 Norm Stewart Classic. And this classic wouldn't be possible without those sponsors. Definitely. You know, you talked about Otterville and the head basketball coach there is Tom Ward. Had a chance to talk to him between ball games. This is his second year at Otterville, but he's been coaching Cam for 33 years, 22 as the head basketball coach. So a little bit of that inexperience so far in the year, not paying dividends for Lincoln in the early going. They were touching the rim during warm-up, so a technical foul was called before the game had started. So that means that the game will start with Otterville being at the free throw line. It's Isaiah Gilmore for the first two free throws. And before we even get the tip started, or I guess the game started with the clock running, it's 2 to nothing, Otterville. So this first quarter of today's game is brought to you by Nestle Barina, your pet, our passion. You know, they were warming up, and you could tell over here on the left side, Tyler Berkey's the head basketball coach for Lincoln, and he yelled out, get off the rim! And I knew that there was going to be a tee and a couple of foul shots to start the ball game. Yeah, sometimes, you, you, sometimes you'll see officials kind of let it go, but when it happens over and over again, they've got to call it, and that's how we will start this one. Two to nothing, Otterville will lead before the clock starts, and they will get the basketball for the first possession. It's stolen away at the top of the key by Lincoln. That's Bo Krennic. We'll give you your starting line. That's first for Otterville. Starting at guard, the junior, number 14, Jim Croker, Brad Connor, Isaiah Gilmore, Mason Matthews to round out the lineup for Tom Ward and company. It's Nate Hesse, Nathan Joby, Evan Schweidler, Bo Krenke, and Jackson Beeman for Lincoln. Lincoln Stealing it away. Here's Cranky with two. Gets it to go. Lincoln now trailing. Now leading. Or tied now, two to two. And they didn't make the change up on the board. It should be two to two. As Gilmore started with a couple of foul shots and then that bucket. Put back attempt on the interior. Doesn't go. Lincoln's off to the races. Here's Krennic in the middle to Job. It's off the mark. Get a putback attempt from Swidler. Doesn't go. Good energy by Lincoln to start the basketball game. Couple of steals early on. Little couple of passes inside the key. Off the mark from Otterville. Mason Matthews, the junior, couldn't get it to go. Defensively, I like the way Lincoln's sliding and getting in the lanes. Open three for Hesse. Bang! Wow. Gets it to go. Five to two. Lincoln leads Otterville. Again, this is a basketball team 17 and 10 last year. Otterville trying to get something going offensively. They haven't had a field goal in this game. Here's a three top of the key. Doesn't go from Gilmore, rebound, put back, count it for Connor. That might be on Hesse in the paint for Lincoln. Had a chance to talk to Tyler Berkey before this game and 
you know, he said he was a little tentative about this team not having any experience in the first couple of weeks of, of what would be a preseason for them. Now they see each other for the first time on the court today. And you even said it, Kevin, if they get out to an early lead, they could be off to the races just kind of playing with some intensity. Yeah, the energy that they're bringing to the floor early in the ballgame is impressive. Here's Otterville with some energy. Three on two. Gilmore lets the traffic go by, but it gets kicked away. Ball's on the ground. And they will call a jump ball. Possession should go to Lincoln after Otterville had the first possession with the technical foul. You know, that was a nice play inside by Hesse because there was a good head and shoulder fake by the offensive player for Otterville. And Hesse kept with it to knock the ball as he was coming down out of the hands of the Eagle player down in the paint. So here's top of the key, Hesse. Swings far side for Job. A little 4-1 outside interior right now for Lincoln as far as their offense is concerned. Don't look like they're really running a motion offense here. It's, it's more of a, a pop-out three-point line, and they'll try to move around. Otterville, as you see, head coach Tom Ward in a 2-3 zone to start things off. Switch now to a 2-1-2. Top of the key, now swing left side for Job. Job trying to get in the interior, left side block, swings to the corner, travel called on the fake from Schwedler in the corner. As we mentioned, Tom Ward is the head basketball coach for Otterville, second year there. And again, 12 years at Cole Camp, 33 years in coaching, 22 as a head basketball coach. So he's got a wealth of experience that he's trying to instill in his program. And, you know, Cam, we had a chance to talk with him before the ball game. Loves the game of basketball, you can tell. And so does Cyrus Gilmore. He's got a triple to go down, eight to five. Otterville back out to a lead now. Here's another tray from Lincoln. Count the bucket. Little splash in the face. Bo Kroenke gets it to go. He's got five of their first eight points in the ball game. Again, both teams early on, I like the way that they flow side to side in their zone and put pressure up top. Ball was poked away. Lincoln will take back possession as we reach the midway mark of the first quarter. Knotted up at eight apiece. Here's a three. Lincoln off the mark from Job. Nathan Job, the senior, couldn't get it to go. Now Otterville on the aggression the other way. They want to get it down to Matthews in the paint, and he's been guarded pretty well, and that's a nice drive. Nice little drive and two-step from Isaiah Gilmore. He's got his first bucket of the night. He's got three. Brother Gilmore, or he's got four, rather. His brother, Cyrus, has three as well. Parker Ingles getting ready to check in for Lincoln. Their first substitution in the ballgame off the timeout, or off the, uh, in, the uh, turnover in the ballgame. Checking out will be Jackson Beeman. You look at these two teams all together, Lincoln, more of a team that likes to work off their energy. Otterville, more slow in their pace, kind of want to get it steady, work in the half court a lot more. There's a little tussle for the basketball inside the lane. Travel called on Christian Bremer. And that was created on good defense, quick hands in the paint by Evan Schwindler for Lincoln. Got in there, tied him up, and the end result was he didn't get the jump ball, he got the turnover instead. Crocky, top of the key now to Hesse. Hesse almost gets it poked away. Gilmore trying to get it. Can't. Here's Hesse. Goes back far side to Crocky, who saves it before it goes out of bounds. So Lincoln knows they need this possession down two. Just kind of throwing the basketball around, and finally they get it to the interior. Bucket doesn't go. Somehow get it back. Now a three in the corner. That one doesn't go. Rebound. Yeah, go ahead. Rebound. Otterville able to get the rebound. Foul called on Lincoln. That'll go on Parker Ingles, his first, team's third. Tanner Bays checking in for Lincoln, replacing Evan Schwindler. So a couple substitutions here in the first quarter for Lincoln. 
10 to 8 your score here at the 225 mark of the first. Otterville trying to get something going offensively. Here's a turnaround jumper, golden from Brad Connor. Connor's got his first field goal of the night. Pretty dispersed in the scoring so far for Otterville. Lincoln has relied on the play of Kroenke and Hesse in the early going. Ball goes out of bounds. They say it goes off of a Cardinal. They will take back possession. Got Tanner Bays trying to get the pass down in the paint, and it was an errant one that went out of bounds. Nobody touched it after it left his hand, so the Cardinals with the turnover. Eagles are back the other way. Less than two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Four-point lead for Otterville as they have the basketball. Top of the key, it's Gilmore. Gilmore swinging far side. Bremer with a three. Too short. Lincoln will push the other way, pull back. Kroenke will take care of things as they thought they had numbers. They're trying to push forward. Double team in the corner. Doesn't evade. Gilmore gets the strip. Behind his back, finds his brother in the front court, and it's poked away out of bounds. Last touch by Gilmore. And a timeout called on the floor. The 119 mark of this quarter. Four-point lead for Otterville. So far, if you look at this Lincoln team, Tyler Berkey was right in his assessment at the beginning of the game. They got off to a fast start, but the fundamentals just weren't there in the next two, three minutes of the first quarter. And I think one of the things, too, they brought a lot of energy to the beginning of the basketball game. Now you kind of have to tone it down a little bit and get into the basketball game. Same thing that has happened the last two trips down for Lincoln. Maybe one too many passes. Maybe looking for the perfect play on offense. Sometimes you've got to slow it down and be more methodical, be fundamental, and, and understand the way the game is played and you can't just be so fast and all over the place sometimes. Sometimes you've just got to bring it up and run a play in a half-court set to get your offense going. You know, you take a look at Otterville at the other end on offense, and they want to get the ball, if they can, in the paint to Mason Matthews. And he's really banging down low to try to get position. And you can see him as he flashes over the left side of the key, tries to get open, tries to give them a good entry pass look, and then he'll spin out and come back to the baseline and come back out around again. So he's working real hard in the paint to try to get touches and get points on the board for the Eagles. I like the spark that Otterville is getting out of their two guards, Cyrus Gilmore and Isaiah Gilmore, the two brothers, both sophomores, They've been playing pretty well in the early going, just facilitating, not trying to do too much, but just staying in this ball game, trying to help their team when they can, and understanding that Matthews is the focal point of the offense. And we saw some quick hands from them to get a couple of steals in this basketball game. Very active on the defensive end. So Lincoln will have possession after the timeout, down four, 115 remaining in the first. Here's Kroenke to set up the offense, top of the key for Lincoln. A couple of substitutions for Lincoln. Tanner Bays is checked in, but it's poked away by Gilmore. Coast to coast, kisses it off the glass for two. Six point lead now for Otterville. Gilmore brothers making it happen. He's got it again, here comes Gilmore. Bucket doesn't go for Bays. Here's Gilmore. And he stepped out of bounds, did Croker towards the end line there. Nice find in the middle of the lane from Gilmore amongst trees and traffic. Found a way to duck it off. Just couldn't stay in bounds there for Croker. See if Lincoln looks for the final shot in the quarter. Could go two for one here down six. Crocky thought about a three. Now swings top side for Hesse. Hesse trying to drive inside the lane. Now kicks at the top. Crocky open. Finds Hayes. It's poked away by Otterville. Lincoln is taking their time on offense, but Otterville's just doing a good job defensively getting in passing lanes right now. Oh, Gilmore nice off tip. balance inside the lane. Now Lincoln's going the other way. First one doesn't go. Five seconds remaining. Cyrus trying to put it back up. Can't get it to go. And that's how the quarter will end. Tanner Bays couldn't get the bucket to go, and Lincoln trails by six. Otterville and Lincoln, 14 to eight, here at the 2018 Norm Stewart Classic. We'll be back with more after this short break.
artificial in Como, what you unexpect. As we get ready for the second quarter of action between Honorville and Lincoln. First, we tipped off with the boys, or with the girls rather, at 8 o'clock. Now we've got the boys here in the 10 o'clock matchup. 21st game of the Norm Stewart Classic. Cam first quarter, Otterville, 5 of 11 from the field. Eight rebounds, but they turned the ball over seven times. Lincoln just 3 of 12 from the field. Seven rebounds for them. They also turned the ball over seven times in the opening quarter. Both teams needing to clean it up a little bit on the offensive end. Otterville has found an answer. And Lincoln still searching for one here in the first half. Here's Matthews, top of the key for Otterville. Swings to Gilmore. Gilmore spinning inside the lane, gets it blocked. Nice little block there from Tanner Bays. He just checked in at the end of the first. And some backcourt pressure, and Gilmore will pick up the foul. Tried to avoid Kroenke bringing it up after the steal. But ran into him inadvertently, and the foul called on Gilmore. So foul called in the backcourt. Lincoln will have possession going the other way. It's one of those situations where Gilmore was trying to get away and couldn't soon enough and picked up the foul. You can hear Coach Berkey in the background saying, looking to create. Here's a bucket, left side wing. Doesn't roll down for Levi Betts. I talked about... Levi Betts being a guy to come off the bench for this Lincoln team. He was one of the first guys in the first rotation, first subs. Even though Tyler Berkey has, doesn't have a really good feel for this team, he knows one thing about Levi Betts is that he's going to come in, he's going to compete, give you a little bit of a spark off the bench. You know, in the first quarter, Isaiah Gilmore, who's got the basketball now, leading Otterville and scoring with six. Crocky had five for uh, Otterville. Uh, or rather, Cronky had five for Lincoln in the opening quarter. Clock called in the interior. As Gilmore was looking to drive right side lane, so it'll be an inbound underneath. Matthews triple teamed at the right side post. Ball gets poked away. Now it's loose. Otterville's able to get it back. And now they try to set up their offense. Top of the key, it's Brimmer. Three from Connor. Count it. What confidence. Gets the pass, steps right into a three, and shoots it over the man covering him. Cam, a couple of threes down the ball. Game Connor with eight points in the first half. He's now the leading scorer with Otterville with eight. 17 to eight. A nine point lead now for the Eagles. And you wonder what Lincoln's going to try to come back with. Here's a jumper. Right side corner doesn't go for Jackson Beeman. Otterville going the other way, trying to get the loose basketball, and they can't. Gilmore finally comes up with it as they get the frenzy all sorted out. Hasn't been a clean basketball game for either team in the first couple of minutes of the second. Definitely wasn't in the first. Here's a corner three. Gilmore doesn't go. Back iron rims out. Kroenke coming down with the rebound. Trying to get a gauge for the offense. Looking inside, good find from Crocky and a better finish from Parker Ingles. That was a nice pass, beautiful pass. Ingles with his first bucket of the night. Nice spin at the right side block to get the two to go. Puts his team now within seven, 17 to 10, your score. Otterville leading, top of the key, Matthews. Gilmore will now bring it out to set up the offense. Otterville, 2-3 zone. You talked about Ingles on that last bucket. All district linebacker for the football team. Three doesn't go at the top of the key for Brimmer. And Lincoln will take back possession. But it's poked away. Now Crocky gets it back. Drives left side lane and gets a right-handed finger roll to go. There's your quarterback on the football team. 1,500 yards passing on the season. Very athletic is Kroenke. Here's another one that's athletic. Gilmore doesn't go with the floater and is poked away by Bays. Here's Kroenke again. Can he finish? Wow. He does. Back-to-back -back buckets for 
Bo Kronke. He's got this Lincoln team fired up. The quarterback now learning how to do it on the basketball court. And look how it's set up. The defense right down low, partially blocking the shot. Then they get it out in the left passing lane, and off they go with Bo Kroenke. Nine points in the first half for him. I guess that's what they say is it, kind of true, Kevin. Once a quarterback, always a quarterback. <laughs> you know, I mean, you take it from the football field yesterday. Today, you go to the basketball court, and you can honestly see here early that he is the floor general for this team. He's the go-to guy as far as the guard position is concerned. They got some big guys that can, you know, compliment him on the interior, but he's got everything going on the offensive end for Lincoln right now. Yeah, well, we've mentioned it a couple of times, the energy that this team is bringing to the floor after the football game yesterday. The other thing is that when you take a look at, at a guy like Kroenke, uh, he's a leader. And, and on the football field, on the basketball floor, they look to him, he's a leader for this basketball team. A couple substitutions made for Lincoln. Devin Parrott checked into this ball game. As well as Cole Smith. Here's a block from Tanner Bays. Second block of the day for Tanner Bays. They're trying to combat that interior of Mason Matthews and Brad Connor. And Matthews wins the battle this time. He'll go to the line to shoot two. And Cam, that's one of the few times here in the first half that the Eagles have been able to get the ball in the paint in good position for Matthews to take a shot. Lincoln has made it difficult in that zone that they're playing for the Eagles to get the ball into the 6-4 player in the middle. Matthews misses the first, second misses as well. Maybe that's their tactic, sit on the free throw line and he won't be able to hit. Well, there's Lincoln having an opportunity to tie this ball game now at the 338 mark of the second. Crocky has it right side wing, now feeds top side to Beeman. Crocky with the three, doesn't go, grabs his own rebound, one dribble, pass inside the base, count the bucket, go to the line, big fella. Always follow your shot. Kroenke did it in a nice underhand feed. That was a good play by Kroenke. Misses the three out here, but he follows his shot, comes into the lane, and nice feed, and the bucket and a chance for a three-point play. Just a beautiful play all the way around by Kroenke, and again, getting positioned down low, getting the bucket and a chance for a three-point play for Tanner Bays. Let's not forget to give Tanner Bays his spotlight. Two blocks on the defensive end, then you come around and you're in the right place just to catch and put it up. And that's exactly what he did. Couldn't finish the free throw and a foul was called underneath. That one goes on Lincoln. Lincoln was down by six after one. And now only by a point now. Now they forced another turnover. Isaiah Gilmore not able to keep that one in his hands and he gets it poked away. Gilmore brothers have looked a little sporadic here in the last couple of minutes. They were the energy and the boost for this team. And here's a timeout called by Coach Berkey before the basketball goes over and back. Smart call right there. And a good point in this contest to just talk about fatigue. You go from football yesterday, you come to basketball today, two totally different type of sports. You think about football, it's short, intermediate, right. quick. You play basketball, it's a long, enduring game on your body, and you've got to prepare your body for that. Could there be a point in this game, Kevin, where Otterville may be more prepared than Lincoln is in that facet of the game? Maybe, but I'll tell you what, you're going off a lot of energy from a football game yesterday. They're going to sleep well tonight. But, you know, you may be able to get four quarters of that still going because of the, the leftover. But you're, you're exactly right. There's a lot of difference. You always hear the coaches talk about they don't have their basketball legs yet as far as football players are concerned to make the transition from football to basketball. And I think that is a key to watching the second half and see how Lincoln, if, if the pace is up and down the floor, and you want, if you're Otterville, you may want to push the pace in the second half of this game. But they need a defensive stop first. Three-minute mark of the second. Here's Kroenke driving baseline. Kicks to Hayes. Inside. Tries to put it up. Can't do it. And uh, here's Otterville coming the other way. Gilmore. Coast to coast. Two-step inside the lane. Count the bucket. Nice kiss off the glass from the sophomore. Gilmore's got eight. Yeah. 
Cardinal trying to find something offensively here. Down three. 19-16. Here's a corner three. Long. No. Rebounds corralled and thrown out of bounds. Tried to be saved by Lincoln. And Otterville will keep possession. I'm not sure Beeman thought that that wasn't tipped down low by the Cardinals, so he dove for the basketball. I'm not sure if that he wouldn't have touched that, that that would have been out on Otterville. Right, exactly. Nonetheless, good effort by Beeman. Here's a good effort, top of the key to poke the ball loose from the Cardinal, but a foul is called first. That one will go on Devin Parrott, his second. Yeah, we talked about Kroenke and the energy he has for this basketball team for Lincoln. I think when you take a look at Otterville, the spark plug for them is Isaiah Gilmore. They want to get hit in his hands and get back the other end of the floor in the transition. When you look at Gilmore, Isaiah, he's more of the ball handler in comparison to the two brothers. You look at Cyrus, he's been more of the cutter, the slasher, right. the guy that kind of wants to get involved in the background, but Isaiah wants to be in the forefront of this offense, as well as Brad Connor, who's added some some really good, uh, really good pace to this game throughout. He just checked out. Croker made both foul shots back up to a five-point margin for Otterville. Lincoln, some touch passes here, trying to find a lane open. They find Crocky in the corner and open for three. Can't hit. Just a little too strong. But a good open look for Kroenke. Here he is pressuring the top side offense for Otterville. And a timeout is called before the pass. And we will keep it right here. Tom Ward, second year head coach for Otterville. But you talked about the youth on both of these teams. We mentioned it early. Tom Ward being around for so long He's going to be able to lead this Otterville team to some good seasons down the road. They're just going through a little bit of a transitional period, being able to have some young guys and some older guys that can contribute as well. Well, and the second thing along those lines, they were 5-21 and 21 last year. This is his second year as head basketball coach. So there's a lot of difference, you know, between year one and year two, getting familiar with the program, the players getting familiar with the coaching style, the coach getting familiar with the players. So there's a big difference, I think, a big jump from year one to year two. It's always a, a process, is what a lot of coaches will tell you. You know, and he took this timeout, and I think it was a good timeout, because he got a minute 46 left to go in the first half. It looked like they were having a little trouble with the basketball over on the right side. So he called the timeout, got the clipboard out, and ran a play, and we'll see what he does. Otterville looking to run their half-court offense here with Gilmore as the point man. Swings to his brother in the quarter, Cyrus. Top of the key being face guarded. Little two-step inside the lane, too strong. Gets it back, followed it, and gets fouled on the shot attempt. Just pestering right there from Isaiah Gilmore, making sure to stay active in the play, not giving up too early. Yeah, he missed the off-balance shot, but the thing that he did, and, and Lincoln wasn't looking for it, was he stayed in the backcourt and he went out into the lane and basically was a no-look pass to try to get in the lane and move back the other way, and they threw it right to him. So here he is at the line to shoot, sinks the first. He's looking at double digits as he makes this second one. He'll be a 10, he's got nine right now. It's a six point lead. Got some subs in for Lincoln. Nate Hesse checks back in as well as Nathan Job and Evan Schweidler will check in as well. 22 to 16, six point lead, make it, stay it at six, but they will keep possession, Will Otterville, as Gilmore missed the free throw. Here he is. No good on the first attempt. Second attempt's on the floor. Lincoln able to grab the basketball and get a foul call. That one will go on number 32, Mason Matthews. His second, team's fourth of the half. You know, that last trip down, Gilmore had the jump or tough shooting luck from the wing, but again, he fouled his shot and then got the basketball and tried to feed it down low to Matthews and couldn't get it to go. Lincoln able to corral the basketball after it was toughed around on the interior. Here's Kroenke trying to feed in the corner. He does. Shot no good from Beeman. 
Otterville off to the races, looking for Matthews on the interior. It's broken away by Beeman. And now Otterville will get it back. Gilmore open for a three. No good, but he's fouled. Got fouled from behind by Nathan Job. That's a point where you just probably let that one go. You yeah. don't try to foul from behind. Well, that's going to be three now at the foul line that stops the clock with 42 seconds left to go in the first half. Then it's been a good first half for Gilmore. He'll go to the line with nine points, but again, he's that spark plug. Try to get out in space and move this basketball team up the floor and try to get numbers against Lincoln. That's Job's second. Team's ninth foul, so you can see where the foul discrepancy is. Nine fouls so far in this contest for Lincoln. Four for Otterville. Obviously, Otterville the more polished team at this point in the season. But, you know, it's very early in the year, and you're looking at different combinations, and you're looking at seeing what you can get as you move into holiday basketball tournaments at the end of the month. And quite frankly, these two teams will meet in conference play in January, and there probably will be a much different look on both of these basketball teams when they play in that conference basketball game in late January. Second one goes for Gilmore. Here's the third. That one wets the net as well. Up nine now are the Eagles. Cardinal. Looking to try to find something offensively. Here they are. Drive inside the lane. Hesse doesn't get the bucket to go, but gets two at the charity strike. We talked about the football players on this team. Nate Hesse, all-district player at wide receiver and linebacker. 15 touchdown catches on the season. They had a great year. They really did. And you and I talked about this between games. Haytai, an exceptional football team in Class 1. They won the game against Lincoln yesterday by a score of 44 to nothing. Sinks both free throws, does Hesse. Now 25-17. Here's Otterville on the other end. Ball's poked away. Hesse there to mop it up. Feeds to Kroenke. Kroenke, two-step inside the lane. Gets the bucket to go. Acrobatic move right there from Bo Kroenke. He's got 11. Ten seconds remaining in the half. Croker for two. Doesn't go. Six seconds remaining. Hesse comes down with the rebound. Lincoln's got to go. Kroenke with one. Here's a jumper. No good. But either way, nice Bo Kroenke has looked good in this half. 11 points. And look at this finish from the point guard, but also the quarterback. Gets the feed from Hesse. Hesse gets the kiss off the glass, and it rolls. 25-19 at the half. Welcome back to the 2018 Norm Store Classic. We're here at Columbia College Southwell Complex, the site for our 21st game of the tournament and at halftime here. We are joined by Chris Massman. Chris, thanks for joining us from the Missouri Electric Cooperatives, VP of Member Services, one of our thankful sponsors here at the 2018 Norm Stewart Classic. We thank you for joining us. Hey, glad to be here. Glad to be part of the organization and part of this event. So, so tell us a little bit about the connection between the Norm Stewart Classic and the Missouri Cooperatives, uh, Missouri Electric Cooperatives. What has the, the partnership been like, and how have you liked it as it progressed? Oh, it's been an unbelievable partnership, and uh, anything that has the, has the name Norm Stewart on it is something that we're very happy to be a part of. Uh, very classy organization, classy guy. It's been great for our state, but uh, really for us as a sponsor of this program, most of these schools uh, come from areas that are served by Missouri Electric Cooperatives. So uh, we're really big about getting out in the community, getting to know these, uh, these families, these folks in our areas, uh, and we're glad to support these youth as they come out and play a great game of basketball. You talk about the, the communities, and we understand how important those are. We see a community like Lincoln here now. They got a chance to, to be around here uh, for the last couple of days. They were actually in a state championship football game yesterday. Yep. But you, you talk about the support that you get from the communities. It's great. You see a lot of fans here. I mean, there, there's a lot of buzz around the North Shore Classic. Oh, absolutely. Always is. Uh, both of these schools are actually members of the same co-op, so it's, it's nice that they're uh, uh, very kind of a conference rivals, too, but uh, 
uh, great communities, um, and our co-ops are gra glad to be part of that. Or that Another cool thing for, for these kids is they get a chance to kind of do the interviews at, at right. halftime in between games and things like that, but there's a lot of interaction going on. For people who don't get a chance to come out to the tournament, you would definitely encourage them to, to, to come out. Oh, absolutely. Come out and check it out. It's a great organization, great time. Uh, all the great names that put this tournament on uh, make it the successful thing it is. So That's Chris Massman from the Missouri Electric Cooperatives, VP of Member Services. We thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thanks, sir. We thank you for sponsoring the 2018 Norm Store Classic. We'll be back with more after this short break from your local sponsors. Atlantis is the 2018 Norm Stewart Classic 48 Hours is brought to you by our title sponsors. Nestle Purina, your pet, our passion. And MPix, life's a party, print it. And by our presenting sponsors, the Columbia Convention and Visitors Bureau. MFA Oil, keeping you on the road. The Holiday Inn Executive Center, Columbia, Columbia's finest full-service hotel. Veterans United Home Loans, dedicated to serving those who have served our country. Ameren, Missouri, delivering safe, reliable energy to Missouri customers. Landmark Bank, Missouri Rural Electric Cooperatives. Hilliard, delivering clean results. Justin's, creating lasting memories. First Midwest Bank, Parker Millard Funeral Homes. Cisco, the heart of food and service. BSN Sports. And by Niles Media Group. You're watching the 2018 Norm Stewart Classic 48 Hours. Welcome back to the Nestle Purina Halftime Report of the 2018 Norm Stewart Classic. Our halftime score, 25 to 19. Otterville leading over Lincoln. Let's take a look at our first half highlights. Brought to you by MFA Oil, keeping you on the road. And it was Lincoln with some good three-point shooting in the first half to keep them in this contest. Yeah, it was Hesley with the three, and then the steal by Kroenke. And Kroenke with a good first half as well. Nice drive, again, protecting the basketball with the left part of the body and going up with the right hand. And there's your steal from Gilmore. And Gilmore had a good first half as well. I thought a lot of energy from the guards. Isaiah Gilmore for Otterville and Bo Kroenke for this basketball team out of Lincoln High School. We'll take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Columbia Commission of Visitors Bureau Como, what you unexpect. If you take a look at all of these in general, turnover's been an issue for both teams, but really shooting it well and getting to the free throw line has been Otterville 9 of 12 in the first half. Both teams about the same as far as rebounding is concerned. 15 for Lincoln in the first half, Otterville with 18. We'll be back with more third quarter coming up here from the 2018 Norm Stewart Classic. We're back, second half of Otterville and Lincoln, third quarter getting ready to start, and it's brought to you by Veterans United Home Loans, dedicated to serving those who have served our country. Well, Kevin, first half, it was a good one between the two. Lincoln playing 10 guys in the first half, trying to really get a feel for their team. This is the first time that they've all been together on one floor this season. Otterville, a little bit more polished. They've got their rotation down to eight as interior Hesse trying to get a two to go. Doesn't rim out, but I guess the big story in the first half, West Matthews, or whether Mason Matthews, no buckets, but he had plenty of buckets in the first half. Did Gilmore, Isaiah Gilmore, now with 12 points in this contest. And the thing, the Eagles want to have Gilmore in the middle of the floor to create, and he did exactly that the first trip down. 14 points in the ball game for him to lead all scores. Calling for the ball at the left side block was Schweidler. He was open, couldn't finish the bucket, but it'll go to the line for two, good find. He was just kind of sitting in the corner waiting for somebody to give him the basketball. And Croker took up the baseline to try to keep him from going to the basket. And didn't get there quite fast enough to pick up the charge. He got bowled over and got a foul on top of it. First free throw rattles on home for Evan Schweidler. His first bucket, or first points altogether of the night. Second one's good as well. Two possession game. 27-21. Otterville outscored Lincoln 14 to eight in the first quarter. Each team with 11 in the second quarter of this basketball game. Foul called to the top of the interior, or top of the key rather. That one's on. Nate Hesse. 
his second. Team's first of the half. Here to start the second half, they've got Hesse on Gilmore in the man-to-man. -man. Putting the bigger defender on the smaller guard. But he found an opening in the corner for three. Gets the lucky bounce to rattle it home. Little English on that one. Already five points in the third quarter. 17 in the basketball game for Gilmore. Here's a jumper. Left side wing, no good from Schweidler. Otterville pushing the pace on the other end. Jump stop, finding Matthews in the lane. Buckets good. He's got his first two of the evening, or of the morning rather. And they lead by 11. Buckets good from Evan Swidler. That's the third time in a row Lincoln's ran that play to get Swidler open on that left side wing. They must really want to get him involved in the offense here in the second half. And that was a nice answer to the bucket at the other end of the floor by Matthews by Lincoln. There's another answer. Brad Connor with a jumper of his own. He's got 10. It seems like the pace of this game, Kevin, is really starting to pick up here in the second half. Both teams getting comfortable. Here's a jump hook inside the lane, no good. Schweidler with the rebound, denied on the first attempt. Can't get the second, Hesse comes down with the rebound. Puts one up, can't go. And Matthews comes down with the rebound. A little fight for the basketball between him and Hesse, but Hesse's called for the foul. That was just tough shooting luck for Lincoln because they had a couple of opportunities down low, got a lot of iron, but couldn't get it to drop. I mean, Hesse with a nice offensive board and putback just couldn't get it to drop in a substitution for Lincoln as Hesse will check out of the basketball game. Levi Betts back into the contest for Tyler Berkey's ball club. Hesse has three. It wasn't a good foul for Hesse, but goes down in the books as one. Here's a jumper, left side wing, doesn't go. Matthews fighting for the rebound, but Connor gets it and gets the jumper to go. Brad connor has got 12. He's really been important. A second option for this Otterville team. Here's Job, moving and grooving inside the lane. Doesn't get the first attempt after the jump stop, puts another Whoa. one up, and somehow it goes. How did he do that? Nathan Job. Finds a way to get the bucket to go high, arcing two, falls right through. Camby was too far underneath the bucket to make it. <laughs> Straight up and down. And the foul's called top of the key, other end for the Eagles. We talked about Connor. How about the combination of Connor and Isaiah Gilmore so far in the ball game for Otterville as they have 29 of the 36 points. You see a couple of guys check out for Lincoln. One being Bo Kroenke. He will take a rest as well as Evan Schweiler. We haven't really seen Lincoln play without Kroenke, so you wonder what the pace of their offense will look like without him. Right now at the guard position, Levi Betts as well as Parker Ingles. Just close to the halfway point of this third quarter. Otterville leading by 11. Connor thought about a two, but had a hand in his face, so he brought it back down. Gilmore looking to get a bucket inside the lane. Doesn't go. Couldn't get his footing. Here come Lincoln the other way. Betts isn't good for two. Now Otterville will push the other way. Back and forth. Gilmore, contact in the lane. Charge. Way to get his feet set if you're Jackson Beeman. And he's outside the restricted circle, Kevin. And Cyrus Gilmore going strong to the basket with the ball. And again, great position inside, good defense. And picking up the charge, as you mentioned, was Jackson Beeman. And I think he's still on the floor trying to retie his tennis shoe, get ready to go. So it looks like Parker Ingles will take the point man for Lincoln. He's got two in this ball game. Only six of Lincoln's 25 points on the floor right now. He's 
trying to get some minutes right now while he's got Kroenke on the bench and give him a blast of air. 2-3 zone, top of the key, left side wing, it's Job. Good find inside the lane, can't finish. Lincoln comes down with the rebound, but it goes off the hand of an Otterville Eagle. And Lincoln will keep possession near side, checking in for Otterville, Jim Croker. Cam, that time, Bays got the rebound, but he brought it from his chest down to his waist before he brought it back up again. And when he brought it down, that's when he got it slapped out of his hands and knocked out of bounds. So those guys inside, when they get that rebound up around the shoulders, you want them to go straight back up with it. Jump stop inside the lane, called as a travel for Nathan Job, And I think the issue there was that he continued his motion and didn't stop it before he took that jump stop. Yep, you're absolutely correct. Is that, that is an illegal move. Well, what he was trying to do is use illegal, where guys will try to jump stop to stop their momentum inside the lane. Here's Matthews being found inside the lane. He gets denied from Beeman. Other way, Lincoln goes. Less than three minutes left in this third quarter. Almost traveled again to Nathan Job. He's able to keep his footing. Stolen away by Gilmore. Lincoln was trying to get a cross-course pass in there. Here they find Matthews double team right side block. He doesn't care. He finishes anyway. That's just pure strength yeah. over power and two other guys that are double teaming you in the post. Held scoreless in the first half. Matthews with a couple of buckets here in the third quarter. Biggest lead of the day for Otterville at 13. Little jump hook yep. inside the lane from Beeman. He's got his first points of the day. Nice leaner with the right hand. Kroenke at the scores table getting ready to check in for Lincoln. Almost a steal. And it now is a one. Steal. Yep. They take it away. Levi Betts. A couple of passes inside the lane. Ingles now kicks outside to Beeman. Beeman working through traffic gets fouled. Tell you what, that was a nice job down low by Ingles because he got stuck down there and he could have tried to force something up and probably wouldn't have gone. He realized where he was and got it outside and they were able to make that move to the bucket and send Beeman to the line. Beeman trying to catch his breath now before he takes his two. And that's one thing that a lot of people don't understand about guys that have this mantra when they go to the line. Everybody has their own routine when they get to the line, whether it's a, a twirl around the back, two dribbles to the right. It's all about your pace, your tempo at the line because those are free buckets. you got to finish right, them. Right. The other thing is, in this gym, it gets real quiet. And that's tough to shoot a foul shot when it's just where you can hear a pin drop. Crocky and Hesse checking back in for Lincoln. Top two guards for the Cardinal squad. Need them now more than ever. Down by 10. Crocky soaring in for the rebound. Pushing the offense forward. Feeds to Bays. Bays. Count the bucket for the big fella. Big man Tan does it again. Crocky backed in. Then fed Bays. One-handed jumper in the paint. Good possession. And he's kind of that go-to for Kroenke when, when he kind of gets double-teamed or, or gets into any type of issues inside the lane. He's been dishing off to Bays, who has really come up in some good situations for him. And Lincoln with a nice close here to the third quarter gets the deficit to under 10. Eight-point lead now for Otterville, 106 mark of the third. After a very fast start to the third quarter, Isaiah Gilmore has been quiet here towards the latter part of it. Here's his brother Cyrus trying for two inside the lane. Doesn't go. Here's Hesse going the other way. Block called on Matthews. Hesse coming down the right side, and he was not going to pull it up. He was going to go to the basket. 
with the ball. And again, he had Kroenke coming down a little bit behind him on the left side of the lane, but there was no question Hesse was going strong to the glass with that basketball. And you see Tom Ward with his hands on top of his head. He's not too happy, and it's because his big man is headed to the bench. Yep. Mason Matthews with his fourth foul of the game. Only four points for the Eagles center in this contest so far. He's going to have to sit until probably the latter half of the fourth. Brad Connor checking in for Matthews. Both free throws good at the line. Charity strike's been pretty nice to Lincoln so far tonight. 38-2, to two, six point lead now for Otterville. Cross court pass, and on the catch, he steps out of bounds. Jim Croker couldn't keep his footing on the sideline, and Otterville will get a free possession. Timeout caught on the floor. Tom Ward wants to talk it over with his boys. It's been a run yeah. for Otterville in the last two minutes. They've really gotten it done. It was 38 to 28 at one point. Yeah, the lead was as big as 13 in the second half of this basketball game for Otterville. It's been a nice finish for Lincoln, and you know what? He kind of turned and Bo Cronkey came back into the lineup. It did. As soon as he came back and got this offense back to where it needed to be, it really did serve them well. And that's not a knock against the other guys that weren't in there. That just shows the leadership that Bo Kroenke brings to this team. And they're all learning together right now. And I think that's the most fascinating thing about this Lincoln team is that they're clawing away. They're staying in this contest. But they're doing it at a point in the season where they don't really know what they can do yet. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of basketball to be played for. <laughs> a lot of practices. <laughs> they haven't practiced yet. So... There's still a lot that, that's, and I think Tyler Berkey's going to take a lot of good things away from this basketball game as they prepare for their next game and prepare for the season. I, I would have to say if you brought him over here right now, he would tell you he's pretty pleased with what they have done, especially the latter part of this third quarter, because they could have folded up shop being down by 13 midway through the third quarter. They didn't. They kept fighting. You know, they've been pretty balanced on the score sheet. Kroenke leads the way with 11, but they have... Five other players, six other players that have gotten on the score sheet here in the ballgame. That's important, especially early on. Try to see what you have, get a gauge for what your guys can bring to the table. Here's a pull-up jumper from Hesse. Count it, Golden from 12. Hesse with eight in the basketball game. Guard tandem duo in Hesse and Kroenke. So important for Tyler Berkey and company. Here's Gilmore with a nice dish inside the lane. And maybe an extra pass that wasn't needed right there from Christian Brimmer. If Brimmer would have just pump faked and went back right back up, he might have had the bucket because Lincoln bit on the fake. Here's Bays. One dribble. Puts it up. No good. Ripping away the rebound is Christian Brimmer. As the Eagles try to evade the pressure from Lincoln. Last second shot, no good from Cyrus Gilmore. We have a basketball game heading into the fourth quarter, Cam. We do. Four-point lead for Otterville. We'll be back with the fourth. Redskins, Eagles, tomorrow at 8.15 on ESPN. Welcome back to the 2018 Norm Stewart Classic. Game 21 between Lincoln and Otterville. And the fourth quarter of today's game is brought to you by MFA Oil, keeping you on the road. And he's kept them on the road. Has Isaiah Gilmore, 17 points in this contest, but he was very quiet at the end of the third. Now he got a quick five points. He had a dozen at the half, got a quick five in the third quarter, but Lincoln's done a nice job. He didn't shoot a lot in the third quarter after he got those five points. And that's because he didn't touch the ball in shooting position as much. So here's Otterville with the first possession. Turnaround jumper falls on in for Jim Croker. His first points of the contest. Six-point lead and now for Otterville. Still a two-possession game. You can hear Tyler Berkey saying, be patient, telling his team to slow the pace down, and they don't. They give the basketball away. 
Aaron pass turns into a turnover for the Cardinals. You know, Hesse had it here on the left side and wanted to go cross court with it. The man was breaking to the bucket. It should have really brought it up to Kroenke and reset the offense. Here's Gilmore bringing across the timeline for the Eagles. He's got an open look. Decides not to take it. Spins inside the lane. And a foul's called at the right side block before the spin from Gilmore. They throw that one on Bo Kroenke. That's his third. Team's fourth. Kroenke's got to be smart here in the next couple of minutes. You can't lose Kroenke in this game if you're Lincoln. Kroenke gets the poke away. Here they go on the other end. He gets the feed, feeds it back to the middle to Bays. It's knocked away. Lincoln trying to provide some pressure. There's Kroenke yep. with his fourth foul. And that's just a point in the game where you've got to be smarter because you know your team's going to need you. Well, it's a reach in to Cam, and it's at half court, way away from the basket. Let and that one go. Got, yeah, and Coach Berkey has to take him out with 7.02 left to go in the ball game. So we will track how that will affect this Lincoln team. Bo Kroenke, the point man for this squad. And there's the point man for the Eagles, Isaiah Gilmore. His first bucket of the fourth, 19 now for the sophomore. With Kroenke out, watch Gilmore now on offense for the Eagles. He thought about a three, decides against it, feeds to Bays on the interior, one step, no good. Bays gets his own rebound, puts it back up and in for two. Tanner Bays, count him for six on the day, and they've been six important buckets, or three important buckets, rather, six important points. Bays, an all-district lineman for Lincoln in football. Fadeaway jumper doesn't go for Bremer. Hesse gets fouled as he tries to push the ball forward for Otterville. They give that foul to Evan Schweidler. Actually, Christian Bremer, rather. Bremer's first. Here's another substitution, Nathan Job. In for Jackson Beeman. Evanston and Lincoln work a whole lot in the half-court set, and they lose the basketball. Gilmore, Cyrus with the finish, and they're fired up. He's got five in the basketball game now, Cyrus Gilmore. Eight-point lead for Otterville, almost taken away by the Eagles, but Lincoln is able to keep possession far side. And Gilmore gets the bucket on really Cam with an unforced turnover. Ball just got out of the hands over here on the left side and he started to break at the other end but it was basically an unforced turnover and uh, he made him pay for it with a bucket. Job three off the mark and Eagle stepped out of bounds while he tried to save the basketball after the Aaron three so Lincoln will keep possession. If you're Lincoln right now without your best player, arguably, in Bo Kroenke. Who do you feed your offense through, Kevin? I, I think you, I think you got to get it down to Bays. I think you, you're looking at Hesse and a bounce pass down on the block to Hayes. There they go. Hayes, buckets good. Big fella going back to the line. Bays with eight in the basketball game. He's just golden from that left side block, isn't he, Kevin? Well, that was a nice bounce pass, too, and a nice turnaround fadeaway jumper, but it all set up on the bounce pass from Levi Betts. You know, the other thing is, right now you're sitting at a six-point deficit. Plenty of time left. He has a chance for the three-point play. Wait and see how long Berkey keeps Kroenke on the bench with those four fouls. At some point, you're going to have to let him play as the free throw rims out for Bays. Hills Gilmore, working inside the lane. Three, no good from Cyrus. Rims out. Who did this one go off of? They will say Lincoln. Nathan Job was fighting for the basketball, and it just went right off his fingertips out of bounds with 5.13 to go. Cyrus. 
Cyrus Gilmore thought about a three, now feeds off to his brother, top of the key. Pressure coming from Lincoln. Hesse trying to play some tight defense at the top of the key, he does. Crossover. And poked out of bounds again by Joe. Good move right there from Jim Croker to get around Hesse. Sometimes that's what you need to do to get around a defender when they're so active with the hands. You know, and Hesse has been coming out away from the basket to put the pressure up closer to the top of the key. Nice steal. This time, Crawford was poked away. Levi Betts to Hesse. Buckets good and the foul. That was a nice finger roll by Hesse. Set up by the defense and the turnover. And here come the Cardinal. They pushed on down the floor. What nice reach in on the steal. Nice job turned in there by Levi Betts. Now you get a substitution. Now Tanner Bays will check out. The real question is, Kevin, when do you bring Bro Crockett back in? You've got some momentum right now. Why not do it while you're within two possessions? I think you may want to try to keep it to four six down and get it to about two and a half, two forty-five left to go in the ballgame before he brings him back in. You know, because he, he brings Hesse up top now to apply the defense where Kroenke normally would be if he was out on the floor. And I think Hesse's done a nice job up there. Well, especially after, after you get the, the four-point deficit or get it down to four, you kind of see what the Eagles want to do offensively, how they're playing this game, and you get a steal right there from Joe. On the other thing, too, Matthews has been on the bench quite a while for the Eagles with four fouls. When does he come back in the ball game? Because, again, he's their 6'4 player inside, and he'd have to go against somebody like Bays. Here's a three. No good from Levi Betts. Seemed like Lincoln was trying to play a little keep away on that possession and just took a three. Here's Gilmore with an off shot. Doesn't go. Rebound pulled down by Hesse. Brings it the other way for Lincoln. Under four minutes remaining now in the contest. Hesse thought about a three. Now fakes his defender. Two steps in the lane. Whoa. Floater's good. Wow. <laughs> Nate Hesse causes Otterville to take a timeout. 12 points for the junior. And he's made it happen while Bo's been off the floor. And Hesse has an eight-point second half going. Putting it on the floor and driving and an off-balance shot. And you talk about a soft touch for the big guy. Six foot one junior, but he's got a stocky frame. You talk about his athleticism translating over to football, being a wide receiver, things like that. On the basketball court, he's, he's looking pretty versatile tonight. You know, we talked about the fact that Kroenke's on the bench with four fouls. The player inside for them, besides Hesse, has been Tanner Bays in this basketball game. He's on the bench as well. Not in foul trouble, maybe to get a little blast of air for the final here in the, the last couple of minutes of this basketball game. Now we predicted maybe that 230-245 mark, a good point, to maybe bring Matthews back in as well as Kroenke. Maybe that decision gets rendered now down two if you're Otterville, or up two if you're Otterville, down two if you're Lincoln. Well, let's look at it from the standpoint of both basketball coaches. Tom Ward for Otterville has a two-point lead. Matthews on the bench with four fouls. Again, you've got Bays. Hesse's been driving. Do you bring Matthews out this early with the fact that driving in, he may pick up a fifth foul? Kroenke's been out, and they've been able to cut into the lead. So if you're Tyler Berkey, the head basketball coach for Lincoln, you say, hey, I'm going to wait a little more longer before I put him in there. Definitely something to watch. We've got a good one and a good finish here for you for the 21st game of the 2018 Norm Stewart Classic. Out of the timeout, Otterville will have possession. Top side, it's Gilmore. They worked on top of the key by Betts. Gilmore gets around him. Now feeds in the corner for Connor. Doesn't go for Brad. Lincoln. We got an answer for Otterville's coach during the timeout. Matthews plays with four fouls. 3.15 to go. Job with the head fake. Now feeds outside to Hesse. Hesse driving. Kicks in the corner. Betts driving. Otterville playing really good defense. Staying within themselves in this 2-3 zone. Denying interior presence. Here's Hesse pulling up from the free throw line. No good. Joe gets the rebound after it was tipped on the interior. 
Bucket's no good, but he'll go to the line to shoot. Foul called on Brad Connor. That's his third. He's got 12 points tonight. Checking back in for Lincoln after this timeout, or rather, once for the shooter in Bays, but checking back in, of course, now is Bo Kroenke, as well as Jackson Beeman. Well, I guess Tyler Berkey did it right. He brought Kroenke in when you're only down two. And the other one that came in was Tanner Bays. So it's Beeman, Bays, and Kroenke checking in here late in the ballgame. 2.40 left to go. Two-point contest between Class 1 rivals, Otterville and Lincoln. Matthews, easy find in the lane for him, and he gets the bucket to go. Good bounce pass between a pair of defenders. Good finish by Matthews. He's got six. Four-point lead now for the Eagles. How will Lincoln answer back? Hesse pivots inside the lane, now feeds back outside the three-point line. Corner for Kroenke, driving, baseline. Trying to kick to the corner to Hesse. It's poked away, but Hesse able to get it back. Hesse going up in front of Matthews. Good. Timeout caught on the floor. 30-second timeout. Tyler Berkey and Tom Ward is fired up. Cam, let's take a look at that last play because they kicked it out in the left corner to Kroenke. Kroenke eyed the three, put it on the floor, drives baseline. Look who he runs into, Matthews. There was contact on the baseline, good no call. Getting the ball on the other side, Hesse finishes off the glass. But again, Kroenke with four, driving to the bucket. Matthews with four, defending. And there was contact, no good call on the play. And then Hesse on the other side of the lane finishes. And boy, we talk about the energy of Bo Kroenke. How about Nate Hesse? 14 points in the ball game, 10 in the second half. Hesse has done a really good job of controlling this offense when Kroenke hasn't been able to. And even when Kroenke's been in the game, it's been more of a tandem duo. They've really worked off each other, fed off each other's energy. And you know what? That really does translate to what they just got done doing yesterday. Quarterback, receiver, as you see both of them right there. They get it done in the football field, now trying to get it done on the basketball court. Eagles had a 13-point lead in this basketball game. It's down to two. 46-44, less than two minutes remaining, and it's crunch time for the Eagles and the Cardinals. Here's an Aaron pass that will go out of bounds. Costly turnover by Christian Bremer. He was looking for Cyrus Gilmore on the cross-court pass. And now Lincoln will take back possession. Tom Ward is red as the Lincoln uniforms. He is not very happy after seeing that turnover. 135 remaining in this quarter. Kroenke. Far side wing, feeds to the top of the key to Beeman. Beeman back to Kroenke. Kroenke driving in the lane. Kicking it back outside. Pull up from Beeman. Doesn't roll. Hesse with the rebound. Powerful finish for two. Hesse had three points in the first quarter. Four total at the half. Eight through three. He's got an eight-point fourth quarter. He's got 16 to lead Lincoln. We're tied at 46. Basket no good. Lincoln going the other way. Hesse, two-step. Kiss off the glass, no good. And Eagles come back down with the rebound. 50 seconds remaining. We're tied at 46. Good defense by Gilmore for the Eagles. And a good job by Hesse not to pick up the charge on the drive. Here's a jumper from the wing off the mark from Bremer. And a jump basketball will be called. Lincoln will take back possession. As we'll get a substitution from Otterville, Jim Croker checking back in. Cam must look quickly at the foul situation. Nine team fouls for Otterville. Five team fouls in the basketball game for Lincoln with under 40 seconds to play. Indeed, that is the case. Will Lincoln hold for the final shot or will Otterville force a foul? Kroenke. Just toying back and forth with Beeman right now. Now 20 seconds left remaining. They may take the clock down and call another timeout. Let's see. 
Job driving inside the lane, doesn't go. Bays with the rebound, puts it back up, and he's fouled. Now, Cam, I think they were willing to bring it back out again, but as you saw Job at the left wing, it opened up. He comes down the left lane because the defense had moved out, and he had a lane, and he took it strong, and even though he misses the shot, the rebound by Bays, and then he goes to the foul line. Bays misses the free throw, so it's still tied at 46. Bays would love to have his ninth point of the contest right here, right now, to put his squad up by one. Here it is. It's too short. Foul called underneath Matthews. I think we'll over the go back to the Beeman. line. Matthews will go to the line. Beeman got called for the foul. Team foul number six. They're still not in the bonus yet. So Otterville will have to now go the length of the floor and score. It's tied 46-46. Here's Gilmore. Up bringing it across the timeline. Timeout for Ward. He calls the second charge timeout of the half. Right here. Here's the ball game for Lincoln and Otterville. Otterville will have the possession, should be an inbound underneath, but we got here with Lincoln powering back. And there's Hesse underneath the bucket. He's been strong down low this entire second half. And again, off the window with the left hand, has got 16 in the basketball game. You take a look, the Eagles, they've got the ball. Ball game is tied, 10 seconds left to go in regulation. They're gonna put it in the hands of Isaiah Gilmore, and let's see what happens. And again, pressure-wise, Lincoln has brought two players. They brought two players out near half court as Cyrus Gilmore and Isaiah Gilmore were bringing it up the floor here late in the ball game. On the right side was Kroenke, the left side was Hesse, and they were right at half court to pick up that pressure. So let's see what they do off of this timeout and the setup that the Eagles will have. Ten seconds, Cam. A lot of time, but sometimes it's not a lot of time, is it? It's not. It makes you think back to the point in this game where Otterville was leading by 13. Lincoln was trying to figure out what was going on offensively. But we touched on it earlier. Earlier, Tyler Berkey talking about the tentativeness of this team just not knowing what to expect today you can't be anything but happy with what you've gotten out of your team today in a position to stop Otterville from winning this contest I think they want to inbound it into the hands of Isaiah Gilmore and let's see what happens it's Hesse, Betts, Bays, Kroenke and Beeman on the floor for Lincoln Croker will be the one that'll inbound it. Matthews and Gilmore, important to look at for the Eagles. They feed backside to Cyrus Gilmore with nine seconds remaining. Gilmore for three. No good. Rims out, ball out of bounds. And it stays with Otterville with 1.6 seconds remaining. On that inbounds pass, they couldn't get it to Isaiah Gilmore because right there following everywhere he went was Hesse. Tom Ward wants to know about the spot of where this basketball will be. Going off the knee of a Lincoln Cardinal. And this will be an interesting inbound. It'll be from the corner. So just adjust what you have to do with the play call. Not a normal inbound play here. Need to get it in. They get it into Gilmore. Puts up a shot off the mark. Wasn't a good shot at all. Couldn't even get in range to take a good shot. Well, and the other thing, too, is they didn't have anything inside, so they had to lob it up top, which means he threw it away from Gilmore to bring it into play. And Gilmore was away from the basket with his back as he got the ball. He had to turn and throw it up as soon as he got it, and it was an off-balance shot. And it was good defense out here by Bays to make sure he didn't get a good look. Well... We're in overtime now, Kevin. Four minutes on the clock to decide this one. And what other way to do it with two rivals? Otterville couldn't get it done in the end. They try to get the inbound to Cyrus Gilmore. Gets a screen at the top of the key. Takes a three. It was a wide open shot. Just couldn't finish it. But that's who, not who you wanted it to be in the hands of. You wanted it to be in the other Gilmore's hands, Isaiah. Well, and that was because Lincoln did such a nice job of the inbounds play because they wanted to get it to Isaiah Gilmore. Obviously, he's the one that runs the offense for Otterville. 
Lincoln did a very nice job. Hesse basically in his jersey. No place to go for Gilmore to get the inbounds pass. We Cam. got two more local contests coming up next. We got Jamestown and Community R6 in our next matchup. They will be the 22nd game of the 2018 Norm Stewart Classic. And then more locals coming up after them. Columbia Hickman at 2 p.m. Girls taking on Moberly and then Columbia Rockbridge against Raytown South in the boys matchup at 4 p.m. to finish up this 2018 Norm Stewart Classic. Cam through four quarters, 19 to 54 from the field for Lincoln, 34 rebounds, 13 turnovers. For Otterville, 17 of 43 from the field, 35 rebounds, 20 turnovers. And look at that, we get a tip. Not too often you get your first tip off of the ball game at the end of the game going in overtime, but we did, and Otterville will take possession. Here's Matthews. Gets it blocked by Bayes, emphatic block for the big man. And here comes Lincoln going the other way. Travel called as Beeman got the travel call on him, but here's the big block from Tanner Bayes. Well, down low, Otterville got what they wanted on the bounce pass down to Matthews, but as you said, great D in the key by Tanner Bayes. Still knotted up at 46, 3.30 remaining in the half. Gilmore for three, doesn't go. Didn't see any offense working, so he just pulled up from beyond the arc. Here's Kroenke moving the other way. So he reached the three minute mark of the overtime period. Neither team scored as of yet. Hesse trying to drive baseline, and he's fouled by what it looked to be Jim Croker. He'll pick up the foul, and it'll be two foul shots for Hesse. Now here's where it gets interesting, Kevin. You, you talk about the fouls situation for both teams. You've got Kroenke with four fouls for Lincoln. Four fouls on the other end for Mason Matthews. They've got to be even smarter than they were in the fourth quarter now with three minutes and four seconds remaining in this game. Both teams would hate to have to lose two of their best players. Hesse missed them both from the foul line. Two big misses from Hesse. Wonder if fatigue could get to him now, but it's stolen away. Kroenke up ahead. He's got an open lane and he's fouled. Nice steal by Beeman. They didn't see him. And a nice lead pass to Kroenke, who's fouled going in for the basket. And if you're Cyrus Gilmore, you've got to make this foul right here. You cannot give him an easy bucket. Good job trying to get back. He got ticked for the foul. But again, defense at the other end. Never saw Beeman as he tipped it away, and Kroenke has two now at the foul line. The first thing we were talking about at the top of this basketball game is the fact that 11 of the 16 players on the roster for Lincoln, football players, and they played in a title football game yesterday. First basketball game, and you go into overtime. How much energy can you have in a basketball game when you've played football yesterday? They've missed their first four free throws from the lines. You talk about basketball legs. Well, they haven't had them here in the fourth. But I'll tell you what, they're getting after it on defense. Beeman almost with another steal there on the left sideline. Tell you what, if I'm Tyler Berkey, the head basketball coach for Lincoln, I really like what my team did here today. Absolutely. We love the fact that they're coming out and they're fighting and that they're tied in this contest with their crosstown rival. Gilmore found inside the lane. Goes back to Connor, who pushes his defender down. But the way this usually goes, the defender's going to get called for the foul, and he will. It's Jackson Beeman on the foul. And that's 17 fouls now on Lincoln, so it's a one and one for Otterville. Get a substitution here for the Cardinal, J Nathan Joe, checking back in. You know, here late in the basketball game, Cam, you're going to look for players that, if they're getting tired, you have a tendency to see those hands go to the hips and sometimes lean forward to get an extra blast of air. And you look over here in Kroenke, he's got both hands on his knees. He looks like he's tired right now. Both free throws good from Otterville. As Kroenke will... Try to get the offense working for Lincoln. Kroenke, open three. Doesn't go, but he's called for a travel before he made the shot. That's an interesting call there because 
It was a catch and shoot, so right. I don't know how you travel when you make a shot attempt once you get the basketball. But the official that made the call was right in front of him when he made it. And Lincoln gets the basketball back anyway. Nice Down by two. Nice step out in the lane to make the steal bay. Kroenke pull up. No good. Hesse tried to grab the rebound, but smartly pulls away. He knows he has three fouls. That's just being cognitive of where you are on the court. Less than two minutes remaining now in the overtime period. Only one team has scored, and it's been Honorville. They had two free throws that were good. Good fake from Connor inside the lane. Gets the fadeaway to go. Back out to a four-point lead for Otterville. Is Lincoln running out of gas? 1.35 left remaining. Big possession here. Kroenke, left side. Feeds in the corner to Job. Job driving baseline, jump stop. Denied! Matthews with a left-handed block. Here's Gilmore. Travel called on Gilmore, and you could hear all the fans gasping for air. But I'll tell you who wasn't. Matthews, he was ready to deny Job. So a nice jump stop and lean in by Job. But again, Matthews playing good defense in the lane, playing with those four fouls, was very aggressive and made the play. One minute remaining in this contest between Lincoln and Otterville. Looking for Bays on the interior, can't find him. And the ball's out of bounds. You would think you'd go two for one here. But Lincoln, if they've got an open three, they haven't been afraid to shoot it. You know, Kroenke's gonna inbound it. Look for Hesse and Bays inside. Feed to Job in the corner. Kroenke's open for three. Count it! Wow. Or let Bo Kroenke shoot the three. 14 points for Bo Kroenke. Lincoln's trailing by one. Tyler Berkey telling his team not to foul. Let him take the shot. Connor does. Off the mark. Rebound by Beeman. Coast to coast. Beeman for two. Count the bucket. Go to the line, Beeman. Kroenke. What athleticism right here from Jackson Beeman. Grabs the rebound, let him take it himself. Middle of the floor kept coming from one end to the other. Eagles didn't stop him. Right up the middle of the floor he went coast to coast with it and draws the foul. He gives his team a one point lead. Could extend it to two with the free throw. And he does. A six point swing for Lincoln. They were just down four, now up two with less than 30 seconds remaining in this quarter. It's got Tom Ward scratching his head, but it doesn't have me scratching mine. We knew that Lincoln was gonna come out here and compete, and they're showing the tenacity that they wanted to bring tonight. Leading by two, Berkey's talking to his ball club about defense. And again, Otterville's gonna wanna get the basketball in the hands of Gilmore. You just gotta, I mean, I think you have to try to look inside for Matthews in the tie. But again, Gilmore with those 19 points, but he's been kind of quiet from the middle part of the third quarter on, at least offensively. I don't think all around, I think he's had a, a great basketball game, but he's been quiet offensively from the middle part of the third quarter on. So it'll be interesting to see what Tom Ward wants to do this possession down, down by a pair. They haven't been in this position too much tonight, has Otterville being down at all. Lincoln has led, or Lincoln has not led for too much of this ball game. You can only think back to a couple of times back in the fourth and the third where maybe they led by one or two points, most likely in the fourth. But now we turn to the overtime period, and here in the late going, it's been Lincoln that's kind of had the, the drive to, to finish. Now we'll see if Otterville can do the same. They've got some weapons to be able to do it. Matthews is on the floor with Connor, both Gilmore brothers, and add on Jim Croker as well. That's yeah, the five. You know, in the second half, they're down by 13. They've gotten the lead here in overtime because of their defense. Do you go ahead and take the quick bucket or do you let the clock run all the way down? 
Tom Ward says, let's take the quick bucket. Three from Gilmore. Yes! Whoa! One point lead for Otterville. Ten seconds remaining. Here's Beeman inside the lane. Doesn't go. Rebound doesn't come down by Matthews. He gets it poked away. And Otterville will have the rebound, but look at this three from Isaiah Gilmore. Ice in his veins. He gets the trifecta to go. Makes the three by sliding to the left to get the look. The pick was set. He had a player on him defensively, but the player got caught up in the pick at the top of the key. Gilmore was able to slide to the left with the dribble, got a good look, and knocked it down. It's been back and forth. That's probably the way he drew it up. Tom Ward and the timeout before probably drew it up that way. Let's set the pick top of the key and let him slide left and see if he'll knock it down. We got options too. He's trying to get a gauge as he brings it across the court and then you get the screen at the top of the key from Matthews and he just drains the three. Now, if you have an open three that early, you go ahead and take it because if that shot goes off, you're going to hope that what you have in the interior is going to grab you a rebound. You get a second chance opportunity. Yeah, and again, he has a good look, so let's take the shot. The other thing that you're going to see on that particular play is after he sets the pick at the top of the key, Matthews releases to go to the rim, and so he's in good rebounding position if the shot doesn't go. So here we are, 4.1 second, 4 seconds remaining in the overtime period, 53 to 52. Otterville leading Lincoln. Otterville will have the basketball underneath. Lincoln will mark up man to man. They will most likely foul on the inbound. 17 fouls for the Cardinals. And they foul Cyrus Gilmore on the inbound with 3.2 seconds remaining. Lincoln does have two timeouts left. So, something to watch here as they could have the opportunity to make two right here. You know, the interesting thing, too, about Otterville, we've talked about Brad Connor, Isaiah Gilmore, Cyrus Gilmore, all three of those players, only sophomores. Talk about Tom Ward building this program. He's going to have something to work off of with the youngins that he's got in the coop. Well, here's one of them. Cyrus Gilmore. Can he put this game on ice for Otterville? First one doesn't go. They get the rebound. Timeout's called. So they put it back at 2.7 seconds as they had 3.2 initially. So right now, without making those free throws, Eagles are in trouble. Lincoln's going to have an opportunity to be in a half-court set and get an open shot. Now it's who do they go to? Do you try to go with Hesse, or do you go with what you know and give it to Bo? You know, I think they're going to try to on a drive by Kroenke, and if he has a good look, take it. If not, they'll try to dump it down to either Hesse or Bays. Because in the paint, you got that situation where if you don't make the shot, there'll be contact in there to try to dispute the shot, and you could pick up a foul there and go to the line. So you've got some see what they do. Got some options here if you're Tyler Burke. Most likely it'll be Bays, Bayman, Hesse, Kroenke, and Job on the floor. We'll see what, it, what he goes with. And looks like he'll throw Parker Ingles in the mix instead. So it'll be Hesse, Ingles, Bo Kroenke, Tanner Bays, and Jackson Beeman. I tell you what, hats off to both of these basketball teams. First of all, as we've mentioned, Lincoln playing in the state football championship game yesterday. 11 of their 16 players, and the other five were freshmen, didn't play on the football team. So basically the entire football team, as far as the basketball team is concerned, playing football yesterday, playing basketball today, they've shown great energy. How about Otterville? Had a 13-point lead, saw it evaporate, and they're coming back here at the end to grab the one-point lead. 2.7 seconds remaining. Jackson Beeman to inbound. Hesse grabs it. Two seconds remaining. Looking for Kroenke for three. No shot. No good. And Otterville walks it off with the last second bucket 
from Isaiah Gilmore. What a contest we had in the 10 a.m. game, Kevin. Cronky had a shot at it deep in that right corner and a fadeaway, and it was just short. But what a great ending to the basketball game. Both of these teams played well. And uh, a hard-fought victory for Otterville, a tough one-point loss for Lincoln. And let's take a look at our play of the game brought to you by MPIX. Life's a party. Printed. And it's going to be that three to put it on ice from Isaiah Gilmore. Again, the pick set by Matthews. He slides to the left side. Man gets picked up on the pick. And a nice look and a drain for Gilmore, who knocks down three of his 22 points to get the victory. And he will most likely be the Gary Filbert MVP. And let's go ahead and take a look at our player of the game, brought to you by Nestle Perina, your pet our passion. We went ahead and tabbed him for our player of the game as well. 22 points, five rebounds, but get this, Kevin, four steals for the sophomore as well. He was active offensively and defensively tonight. Again, right there, a nice runner with the right hand. Also, both ends of the floor playing good defense, and again, he gets that spark going for them offensively in the middle of the floor with the basketball leading the break and driving in the middle. And, and again, another shot deep in the corner. He got the nice roll off the back of the iron. Great game for the sophomore, Isaiah Gilmore, this afternoon with 22 points. Well, Lincoln goes home empty-handed in the back-to-back -back rivalry of the girls and the boys. Second game, boys get the victory, 53-52. That's a wrap for Game 21 of the Norm Stewart Classic. We'll be back with more after this.